So we need to think out of the box, which Dr. Kaplan has been doing for years, as many others ought to be doing that we're trying to do, and we come up with this paradigm. So we're talking about traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury does not necessarily require loss of consciousness. It's very common. You can be in a car accident, just a fender bender, and your head just moves jerks. That could be traumatic brain injury. It not, may not be enough to cause significant problems, but it might in the individual who's had other uh, injuries or has other conditions uh, to which Dr. Kaplan alluded as well. The folks who are at particular risk are the military, motor vehicle accidents, contact sports. And in most diagnostic evaluations are normal. The clinical exam is normal. Uh, MRI, CT scans are usually normal. And when in the acute setting, uh, it can manifest as a headache, slight confusion, and, and possible dizziness. But weeks later, you can begin having chronic headaches, cognitive difficulty, thinking, memory, attention deficits, mood swings, PTSD or not PTSD, but this, people coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq have tremendous, uh, very often, uh, adjustment issues coming back to family very often because of this. There was a study done by Harch uh, in 2011 uh, using um, this treatment paradigm showing significant improvement in cognitive testing, quality of, of life measures using low, mild pressure hyperbarics. And he used this spec scanning. And you see these moth-eaten areas here. This was before the treatment. This is after the treatment. It's all been filled in. That's the plasticity of the brain. That's been improved by hyperbarics. We're involved in a study uh, uh, that is a multi-center trial. Dr. Cornish, who, wave your hand up here. She's my partner, and I are involved in uh, a multi-center trial using hyperbarics called EMBER, National Brain Injury Rescue Rehabilitation. The entrance criteria are for traumatic brain injury and or post-traumatic stress disorder. And in this study, uh, the preliminary findings of 33 soldiers using this ANAM or automatic neuropsych assessment metric was able to show striking results uh, with this uh, intervention. And what uh, it's a busy uh, graph, but let me try to piece it through to you. There are six sections, six blocks, and within each block there is a pre-deployment, there is a post-injury. There is a post-40 treatment and post another 40 or 80 treatments of hyperbarics. So that you can see where the person's functional capacity was before they were injured, after they were injured, after 40 treatments of hyperbarics, and, and then 80 treatments. You can see, for example, that in this setting, procedural reaction time, sample reaction time, in this setting, there was significant deterioration in reaction time, but the 40 treatments was better than pre-deployment let alone 80 treatments, which was double pre-deployment, double his normal, pretty incredible. And that there were no complications or adverse events. Every patient improved was durable. Earlier you treat the better, and the more severe you need more. Post-traumatic stress disorder, Dr. Kaplan alluded to the fact that there's inflammation, and in fact this is a study uh, in 2004 that showed a marker of inflammation in women in relation to PTSD. So if you think about the HBOT has the capacity to act as an anti-inflammatory, that is presumably one of the mechanisms by which this helps. And in fact, this LSU pilot, a small study, uh, again through Dr. Hart, showed a 30% reduction compared to cognitive therapy, which was 14% reduction in PTSD. The chronic post-stroke state, Dr. Efrati from Israel published this earlier this year, taking folks as far out as 36 months from stroke, remember what I had, had mentioned, actually I'll get to that in the next slide, that there's a decrease in cerebral or swelling of the brain um, and decreases the severity of brain infarct. So that, that those stunned cells that are not normal after a stroke but are hibernating just to survive, they're still not functional. This this intervention can turn them on so that motor function, sensory function, cognitive function can, can begin to improve. Now, I don't want to give the impression that it gets people to normal because when cells are dead, they are dead. 
but there are a certain number of cells around that focus of dead tissue that actually can be turned on by this technology. Uh, neuropathic pain and fibromyalgia, certainly that was mentioned a moment ago. And this is a, a study uh, by Colleen, the, Colleen Thompson and, and others uh, showing the successful treatment in relieving neuropathic pain, in relieving fibromyalgia. Now, granted, it was a small study, but there was a statistically significant difference between uh, uh, patients with placebo and active treatment. Uh, complex regional pain syndrome or reflex sympathetic dystrophy is another pain syndrome that has also been shown to have significant improvement uh, using this technology. Decreasing in pain, improvement in mobility. Uh, another author supported that study, albeit uh, in small studies, but they are very reassuring. Allodynia is the concept of diffuse pain. And so that, that concept of pain and swelling all decreased using this treatment modality in this setting. Uh, and then another study showing improving peripheral nerve regeneration. Cognitive impairment uh, in a rat study showing improved spatial learning and memory, and in humans, improving neuropsych function after chronic brain injury. Multiple sclerosis. The, the literature is mixed, as is often the case in a controversial area. Uh, but Dr. Philip James, who is arguably one of the world's experts in the field, feels that, there, uh, that this technology has the capacity to significantly reduce the rate of deterioration in multiple sclerosis. And there are other uh, authors who support that. Cerebral palsy, um, reduction of spasticity, um, children uh, after following hyperbaric treatment. Moving into the next category uh, in miscellaneous, in fatigue, there was actually a study, again, albeit a small group of people, using chronic fatigue syndrome, whereby there were statistically significant improvements on, on all of the uh, parameters and metrics that were used in terms of quality of life scores. Uh, gastrointestinal inflammation, again, this is an anti-inflammatory process, so severe ulcerative colitis, uh, ulcerative colitis in, in Crohn's disease, this has the potential capacity to help. In orthopedics, radionecrosis is the phenomenon when people get radiation for a tumor, for example, and there's destruction of bone. Um, this technology has the potential to reverse some of that uh, abnormality. Bisphosphonate-induced osteonecrosis, it's certain medications are used uh, in cancer by intravenous that can also cause uh, the metabolism of bone to be abnormal and to, to start breaking down, and this technology has the potential to reverse that. A vascular necrosis is the condition where there's, imp imp there's impaired blood flow to a joint, particularly the hip is often uh, affected, and this potentially can improve that. And if you think about improving oxygen, improv improving blood vessel growth into those areas, it makes sense. Soft tissue injury, uh, there was a study done um, in, in uh, soccer players in England where there was a, a, a one-third the recovery in the folks who were treated with hyperbaric compared to standard treatment. Uh, urologic conditions, uh, interstitial cystitis is a condition of very um, significant uh, bladder pain, frequency, urgency, and um, there are a number of studies that have shown that, again, this is an inflammatory process, that this condition can be significantly improved uh, with hyperbarics. Uh, and providing a durable relief in the management also of radiation-induced uh, bladder inflammation. Toxic mold exposure, again, Dr. Kaplan alluded to this as one of the triggers in his paradigm. This was a small study, 15 adults, but in this study it was shown that attention, reaction, consistency were all improved in folks who received hyperbaric oxygen treatment. And then Lyme disease, which I had mentioned is a personal interest of mine in the study to which I alluded very early on, uh, I took 209 patients who fulfilled international case definition of Lyme disease, of uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, including negative blood tests for Lyme disease, and looked for alternative markers and then treated them with antibiotics. And 62% uh, of the individuals um, 
here it is, 62% of those treated had a statistically significant improvement consistent from my standpoint as promoting the concept that many of these folks with chronic fatigue syndrome actually have blood test negative Lyme disease. And so that how can Lyme disease be impacted by what the concepts are to which we've already alluded? Well, uh, I already mentioned that chronic fatigue syndrome was shown. Well, I suspect a certain proportion of these folks actually had Lyme disease. Um, in uh, 97, uh, Dr. Whitehouse uh, and others showed the presence of enzyme activity of the organism responsible for Lyme disease that was important in controlling the oxygen environment of the organism. And Dr. Fife in 98 actually took 79 subjects and showed a statistically significant improvement in quality of life measures. Another study showing a case study of a 14-year-old boy who had severe crippling inflammatory arthritis, all of which appeared to disappear within a couple of weeks of therapy. And so that, again, the anti-inflammatory components, and there are probably other mechanisms that I'd mentioned earlier. So that what I've tried to do here is to show that hyperbarics can impact on a number of factors directly on Lyme, both in terms of the anti-infective component, uh, indirectly improving immune function, improving the function and effect of antibiotics, but the supportive role of many of the downstream effects that Lyme disease can cause, including fatigue and pain and mood and cognition and overall quality of life. And so that my uh, recommendation coming out of our work over the last three years, actually I need to make a comment before I go into this, and that is that the pressures that we provide, remember as I'd mentioned, one ATA is sea level, two ATA is 33 feet, three ATA is 66 feet below sea level. The deeper you go, the more concentrated the oxygen. Deeper isn't necessarily better. And what we're finding is, is that for the neurologic conditions, you only want to go to mild pressures, to 1.5, 2.0 ATA, or the equivalent of 18 to 33 feet below sea level. So that in that setting, it can help support the nervous system, the pain, the cognition, the quality of the energy. Uh, it may help with detox support, which is an important component in many of these folks. However, if you are concerned about wanting to augment actual going after the inf underlying infectious process itself, then I feel that going deeper to augment the effects of the antibiotics to act as the anti-inflammatory is more worthwhile. And so that there are a number of indications. This is expensive technology. It's not affordable by everybody. It's not appropriate for everybody. But there are some conditions that I think may be of particular import to seriously consider, particularly when pain is out of control. Control. When you've got instability of the nervous system that is just not adequately being managed through other modalities, um, or that there's residual neurologic deficit after appropriately directed antibiotics. There are some people who have a Herxheimer response, which is an, a hyperimmune response when antibiotics are introduced and there's an increased flare of symptoms. This potentially can quiet that down. Going deeper uh, in terms of the pressures, uh, the inflammatory arthritis, and I alluded to a case study to that effect. Um, so that individuals who plateau after other aggressive management may be candidates for this, frequent relapses, special cases for someone, I want to get pregnant, I want to get pregnant and do whatever you can. This may be a consideration. It's not the end all be all, but it's those people who have special cases. I want to go to, I really want to go to college, do whatever you can. And so it's something to consider under those circumstances. And this is a testimonial case. After seeing a string of doctors in Chicago, the, the last comment from his primary doctor, we may never know what is wrong. Our son was in great physical distress. You set up a comprehensive medical plan that addresses Lyme and co-infections. Then you prescribed HBOT, transforming our entire family from whose future looked destroyed to a family that now holds future full of good health and happiness. And that's our goal. The sky is the limit. Thank you.